we brought back the intensity book just for for good memories you know bismillah rahman rahim hello everyone and welcome to this is football welcome to another stream uh, you know usually we don't do these uh, these streams on a friday usually we don't do these streams this early but at the same time usually we don't play premier league football on a thursday you know so we don't really run a hosam x tom little on a friday but things are different because liverpool played sheffield united yesterday obviously just so much extra unnecessary drama that we had to deal with but this is this just comes with being a liverpool fan i guess at this point so uh yeah oh my god <laughs> oh my god i have no words you have i have no words bro bad stifled me that said stream had to start at 12 because tom is on his lunch break from school <laughs> Oh my lord, I love you guys, man. I love you guys. Hit the like button, you guys. Hit the like button. There's already 51 people in here. We ain't even started yet. So we're gonna be talking about Sheffield, of course, of course, the Sheffield United game. We're gonna be talking about uh, you know, kind of the Man United game a little bit. We're gonna be touching on the title race. Um, you know, so yeah, I don't know if I should play the song or I should just say welcome to Tom Little. Like, I don't know which direction i should head in with this intro because i could easily just go like you know welcome tom little and just be a nice person actually this is the last friday in ramadan so let me just be nice and go like joining us on the channel is the man the myth the legend man like tom little hello hello mate <laughs> can you say hi to the people like why are you so awkward lad I, i'm not used to doing streams at 12 o'clock I've, I've barely woke up yet Everything's thrown off at this point. I'm not used to them streams either. It's just mad. It's mad, honestly. But we have to do early streams every now and then, you know, when we have a game like we did yesterday specifically. So, yeah, big up the chat. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Keep getting involved in the chat. Keep letting us know your opinions. And, Tom, we'll just start straight up with the game yesterday. Tell me your thoughts on, on the Sheffield United game, brother. Um, where do you start on that? Uh, Job done is all I'm gonna say on that. Job done. I, I, we didn't play very well. Um, we made it a lot harder than we needed to. Um, big ups McAllister, boss little player. Uh, big ups to the <clears throat> substitutions. I, 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 we agreed last time that McAllister was. Oh, uh, here we go. I know exactly why now. you said big up for the substitutions. I know exactly why you are. No, no, no. It. We all thought they were weird. But they were the right subs. They were the correct. Those we, subs we didn't work. Yeah, but that's why he's the manager. He made the correct subs. He took off a player who wasn't having an impact. He took off multiple players who were having impacts, actually. Brought on players who did have an impact and we won the game. You know, the, I, I'm not even that bothered about the goal we conceded because it was just a little bit unlucky. Like on another day, that hits Bradley's leg and hits Kelleher's leg and stays out. It was actually mm -hmm. just. Well, unlucky that it's went through his leg. Um, very weird sort of second out. We, we were very like lazy and stuff. I, I, I was quite disappointed in, in parts of that game, not because I, was, I didn't expect us to put five or six past them, but I did expect it to be you know a little bit more comfortable than needing the 77th minute Gerard versus Olympiakos recreation to get us through Sheffield United at home. So it, it was it was too much though. I agree with you. Like we we shouldn't. This shouldn't be the case. This really shouldn't be the case. We couldn't. Sh we shouldn't. Can't but be... it, it's going to be. This is how pretty much but every why, game though? is going to be. Why? Because, because that's just how we are. That's just how we are, mate. That is just how we are. There's no um, rhyme or reason. That's just how we are. It's just how we are. It's just who we are, mate. You know, mm -hmm. That's another problem. We, we are we are unsustainable FC. Twenty nine games now where we've been unsustainable and counting. You're running unsustainable gimmick. It's literally in, in April. We're in April now. Uh, no, that's, that's what, what everyone like. everyone says. We're unsustainable, mate, aren't we? We won't carry Any, on. You can't keep scoring late goals. Anyone who says we're unsustainable is just it's just idiotic to say it at this point in oh, the yeah. season. It's just so idiotic. It's mainly can be calling fans. something unsustainable now, like it's unsustainable. Yeah, but unsustainable gimmick. You can run that in like August, September. I called Chelsea unsustainable under Tuchel when it was like 
their defender was their highest goal scorer. Yeah, okay, you're damn right. That's unsustainable. But please don't tell me now, unsustainable brother, we are in April. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, the, it, something is something can't be unsustainable when you keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. We have made yeah. it sustainable because we continue to do it. So, yeah. it's weird. But look, job done. Three points on the board. Eight games to come. Eight more wins. And then you're Premier League champions. That's all that you need to focus on. Can you actually uh, like actually analyze yesterday's game, or are you just gonna give me the whole? I, I, I mean, well, no. I mean, what do you want me to analyze? I thought that Joe Gomez starting wasn't the correct move because we had no left foot on the left side, so we had no width, so everything got forced through the middle, which is yeah. Exactly thank you for finally giving some analysis. Why? Why, why didn't Simicast start? Can you tell the world? Because Klopp doesn't like Simicast. I thought that was a well-known fact. Oh my god. It's not even I, the thing is that we're all going on about Simicast, Simicast, Simicast. Robertson came on and was at probably his best game this season. He was really good. Um I, I thought disagree. Curtis Jones. I thought what do you mean you disagree? Not with Curtis Jones, with uh, with uh, with uh, Robertson. What do you mean you disagree with Robertson? Bro, his delivery is from the corner. I think we need to make a rule at the football club. We cannot make him take corners anymore. No, no, his corners were crap. The cross for Gakpo is really good, but his corners were crap, Tom. You have to be honest. So was everyone else's, hence why we didn't score off McCorney? No, but like, he kept hitting the first man. It's just pointless. It's actually pointless with him. When I, when I look, our standard of corner takers is crap. I can't throw it at just one person for being crap. Everyone's crap. Sobberstar's corners can be crap. McAllister's corners can be crap. Robertson's corners can be crap. Trent's corners can be crap. Robertson gave us what we needed. Nothing McAllister card. does is crap. Don't lie now. No, he's got inconsistent corners. That's not lie. I don't think anyone at this football club's got consistent corners. But Robertson, I, I will say this. I, I said it last night. Robertson and Diaz actually had a bit of chemistry for once. It looked like they wanted to play together. But, yeah, but that's go around the outside and Diaz would come inside. Diaz would go outside and go play inside. with Diaz so he can get overlapped, you know, because I feel like he needs that a little bit. Diaz, by the way, wasn't even good yesterday to begin with as well. Can, can we stop yeah. acting like players were good? Because at 1-1, if I called Tom Little and went like, name the good player. You know who I thought was a good player yesterday? Mm -hmm. Before, before we equalized or any of that stuff, yeah? There's yeah. there's two two players who I thought had a good game, and I said it yesterday <laughs> on stream. McAllister, Darwin Nunes. That's that's literally the only two players that I thought were actually actively um, having a good game. And Darwin Nunes, even without the goal, but I thought Darwin Nunes was actually starving. Like, he was starved from any delivery. No one created him nothing. No one done anything for him. There was two good players for me, Nunez and, and McAllister. McAllister, even without the goal, I'm saying forget the goal. I'm saying overall performance. They were they were uh, well, good. I, I'd, I'd say Nunez and McAllister were the two best players. But I thought that Canate, I thought that um, Sob Soberslai, yeah, I'd, I'd probably at the lower end of it. But Soberslai, Diaz, and Canate all had decent games. And Van Dyke as well. Van, Van, but Van Dyke, I have high standards. Well, that's decent. Good I'm game. saying like good game. That's the difference. But, good game was yeah. two players, in my opinion. Yeah, but not everyone's gonna have a good game. I, I kind of think that that's gonna be the case to end the season. We're, we're, I don't think we're gonna have performances where everyone's gonna play well. That's not gonna happen. We we are gonna rely on individual. We need to have one this game. Sunday. We don't. Mohamed Salah does. I'd like it if you could stop missing so many fucking chances. Now, can we have the shark Mo Salah back, please? Anyway, let me Fuck go to the super God. chats. Big up to Felipe who says Hussam is a fraud. The Hussam X Tom show post Man United 7 0. Tom said he wanted McAllister and he got triggered. And why is Simicas not oh. playing Man United 2 2 LFC? You know, Felipe, even Tom. Did Hussam not the want the greatest midfielder in the Premier League? Wow. Relax, Tom. Relax. Right now, even Tom will vouch himself. I said I don't want McAllister for, I think it was 80 million at the time, no? They said, "No, they never said AC. I think the most they ever called was seventy something million. I think the no, most no, they ever called was seventy something million. They said, bro, I didn't know we were gonna spend that much money last summer anyway. And when they were saying like 75, 80 million and all this mad, 
No, there is no, no, Philippe. I'm being that serious. There was actually a point in time when there were like, I, I swear, there were like 85 million or 82 million or something. And I think it was like, oh, yeah, I remember it was like 70 million with like 10 million add ons or blah, blah, blah. You're saying it's for 70 million, it's a deal now in hindsight. But at the time, no one would have taken him for, for 80 million. But I was, uh, but I even, was it. but, but. Well, however, ever since he stepped foot in the club, I've been the most pro McAllister guy from game one. Big up to you, Felipe. Uh, Tom is being so lazy with his analysis. Clearly stayed way past his bedtime last night. Robbo Jones changed the game. Gakpo was sensational. Your response to Ryan, please. You talk a lot for a man who's got horrendous clips coming out daily on Twitter.com. You talk an awful lot are. for that kind of man. There you are. So he made it personal because he made a valid football point? He started off being personal. Look at him. It took him until he the second you're lazy with your analysis, which is fair. Which is fair. You are lazy with your analysis. I, I don't <laughs> think Sheffield. I don't think Sheffield United at home in a three-one is a game where you're going to get immense tactical analysis. Sheffield United set up deep. We kept going through the middle and couldn't break through because we had no wit. The moment we bring on wit, Respect we start attacking and scoring goals. Respect Respect actually percent. Nice. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. Respect I mean, I, I, lo I love the fact that we're unsustainable, Hassan, but we broke the record for most XG in a game. Oh, 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 who who, 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 who said this to you? Can I understand? Or uh, loads. Just go on Twitter. No, no, because someone said this to you recently for you to be bringing it up this much. I who saw it said again. It I, I, I saw it again last night. I can't remember who said it, but I saw it again last night. It just rattled me because we're 29 games into a season at the top of the league. How can you not be sustainable at this point? I thought someone said that to you, to be honest with you. I really thought someone said that to you. Like, I, because you know what it is for you to, I know you, like, I actually really know you well. For you to mention something this much, like, it needs to be someone fully just said it, it to you. P, P, the thing is, people still mention it. And that's what gets me. I, no one specifically, but I just see other people mention it randomly. I, I just keep, it rattles me because at this point, how can you not be sustainable? We are 29 games into the season. We have played about 45 games in all competitions <laughs> and we have won. Fucking 40, pretty much. We've won like 35, 40 games this season, but we are unsustainable. How? When is it going to come crumbling down? It's literally it 5th no April, man. 5th April. You cannot say unsustainable. You can't. Big up to you, though, Rere. Rere on a reel. You know, me and, and Tom always insult you and stuff, but big up to you for always supporting the Hussam X Tom Little Show. Liking for Flawless. Oh, my God, brother. Randy, you must be Flawless's burner at this point. This makes no sense. I even prefer Rere over Flawless. You need to relax, brother. You're up in New Zealand at like 1 a.m. What's the time? Fair, in New I, I, I think you're going to have a very fun time on the on the stream at 1 o'clock, aren't you? It's midnight in, 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 uh, mid in New Zealand, Randy, you fraud, and you're out here doing Flawless prop. I'd rather do you Rere prop. And yes, of course, I will have fun. I always have fun on that stream. I've cooked Flawless so many times, man. Big up to Kat Sande, uh, who sends in his stripper money. Brother, there's not a strip club in Essex. Grow up. Uh, big up to... But thank you for the super chat. Big up to Felipe says, Sam, if you beat Man United, are your favorites? Big up. C can, can Felipe, can, can I and you have an honest conversation quickly, you know, before, before Tom goes? Can we stop with this, like, with this, like, who's the favorite kink? Because it's actually just cringe at this point. Because every three seconds, someone wants me to say I'm favorite. Yesterday, yesterday, listen to this, Tom, yeah? I started the watch along. We scored the first goal. We scored one goal. That's it. We're just one. Yeah. We're one nil up against Sheffield. Nunes scores a goal with his balls, you know. And directly, first comment comes in: Are you title favorites now? Are you title favorites now? You... I'm like, bro, we are one nil up against Sheffield. We are expected to be one nil up against Sheffield anyway. You know what Why they're trying to do like though, Hassan? We were doing something incredible. Like, it's Sheffield, you know what they're bro. trying to do though. They're trying to get clips. They're trying to make you say yes we're favorites. So then, if we don't win, they go ha ha ha, you fucking little bottle job. That's what they're after. No. Ultimately, well, though, if we be, if we beat Man United on Sunday, I've got a lot more confidence because United is a horrible game. United at Old Trafford is a game which has cost us league titles before. I don't want to throw it away again there. Get over yeah, the line. You, I, you tell me it's more it, it's more confident if you beat United, of course. But will I say... You know what it is? We're you know what it is, man? I, I, I was, you see I was what City done to Aston Villa? You know what? How, what yeah. have I been telling so, you for the last two months? They can win no, the game Sam, with the best. You, you, you gotta hear me. You gotta hear me on this. Yeah. So I was on with Mike yesterday, and he was breaking down the last couple of games for me, and he made a good point. If we beat United tomorrow, 
that effectively secures Villa and Tottenham Champions League because United would be probably, a, based on the fixtures, the Tottenham have 12 points behind. At that point, in each of our last three games of the season, those teams have nothing left to play for. If you want to include yeah. West Ham, who might still be in the Europa League, they'll go, okay, we'll bin off the league because that we can't get Champions League. If we win the Europa League, That's we get if Champions they beat League. Leverkusen, of course. Yeah, yeah. So if they're in a situation where they can focus on the Europa League, they focus on the Europa League. All of a sudden, last four games, the, the teams might be ro- rotating on the beach, not really fully into it. The first four games, you've got United away, which is what their season's built around. Um, Crystal Palace at home, which you should win. Um, Everton away, what their season's built around. And Fulham away. I'm now starting to see the logic, and if we beat United... We have a we have potentially a very decent running. Still not easier than cities, but potentially the the stuff that's, around that's it is a lot problem. easier. That's actually my problem. It's just the city run is so pathetic, man. It's just there's no one. There's no one. We gave the wrong guy the number eight. I I don't get Wait. this sort of stuff though. Like g- genuinely, people people have an affiliation with them, right? Because of Gerard, and I agree that, but. The number eight before that was Emil Heskey. Like the number eight yeah. hasn't always been about this enigmatic Wasn't midfield. Wasn't the eight in the eighties? It might have been, but it, there was a number of years where the eight was just a bit of a mid number because we kept giving it to mid to slightly decent players, and it lost a little bit of its relevance. And then Gerard came and dragged it back. I'm fine with Sabasly having the eight because at the start of the season, Hassan, how many people were saying he's our Gerard regen, and now it's Mac Ten's the Gerard regen. And give it five, give it another half a season, and fucking Curtis Jones will be the Gerard regen. Oh and Ryan my God, you're right. Everyone just wants to be the Gerard regen. Are we just going to pass the number eight round every half you know, a I season? I just went to a website. One second, Tom, let me tell you. I just went to a website. Liverpool number eight. Gerard obviously is number one. Number two is Navigator. Number three is Stan Collymore. Number four is Heskey. Number five is Leon Harrison. And number six is Paul Stewart. That that's in the Premier, isn't it? So unfortunately, like the likes of Aldridge who wore it and Sue Ness who wore it and uh Teddy McDermott who not Teddy. I can't yeah, it's Teddy McDermott who wore it. Um all them not don't count in that because they weren't Premier. Our Premier number eight bar Stevie G have been really quite mid. Stan Collymore scored some goals, but he was a bit of a knob. Uh Nabi Keita being number two says it all. Although I think probably Emil Heskey deserves a bit more credit there. But again, it's Emil Heskey. All that sort of stuff you look at and go... Mm. So yeah, I'd, I just don't see the point in why we're all going, ah, oh, you need to give Mac- McAllister the number eight. He chose the number 10. He had the option to have the number eight, but he chose the number 10. So Ooh, a person did that man in war eight. Did he? Did McManaman wear these? I cannot find the ones from the 80s, though. Find Am I forgetting eight. McManaman wearing number eight? McManaman never wore number eight at us. He wore it at fucking Real. I don't know why it says McManaman. Uh, Tom, how do you feel about... Oh, Cameron sorry. No, he did. He, he wore it. He wore it in the 92-93 season. McManaman. How do you feel about Amaran being ours soon? Says Marius. I won. You, you, you want to think about the party stream that Hassam had when Jordan Henderson or was planning when Jordan Henderson left? I will have that party stream when I'm I never actually to. had that stream, by the way. No, Let's that. you were going to, and then you bottled it. Um, but the the party stream that I will have when Ruben Amarim is announced, it'll be beautiful. It will be uh, people can come on. It will be a celebration for my greatest victory. Is Ray allowed on the party? Um, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> After Virgil van Dijk, Maka should be the captain, stays calm and composed, sets the example and is consistent. Trent is amazing, but would not be a great captain. Oh, why would Trent not be a great captain? I still think Trent would be a great captain. I literally remember Arsenal away in the FA Cup when Trent won us the game and everyone was going that to captain's performance. And now we're saying he can't be a captain, even though his last real game, which he played from start to finish, was a captain's performance. What are we doing here, people? Well, no, I, I, what are we doing here, Ryan? I apologize, people. What are we doing here, Ryan? 
why are we now just trying to rewrite history constantly? Except but however, however, there's a guy called Sean in the chat who brings up a fantastic point. Look up to you, Sean. Usually you're always moaning, Sean, you know? However, this time you make a great point. Who cares about our next captain anyway? Like, listen, Virgil is the that captain right now. Anyway. Until he leaves, I still think I'm making Trent captain, though. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm still making Trent captain. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm still going to make Trent captain. Provided he stays, Trent will be probably like 27 when it's time to be captain. He'll be ready. Yeah, he should be. He should be captain, 100%. Big up to you, Ryan. Here come the reactionary people. Bench Mo versus United. We win easily. Play him, we draw. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. The reason why we will draw against Man United is if we start Mo Salah on the right hand side. You know, you guys are such frauds, honestly. That's isn't that though? Isn't he the Liverpool player with the most goals at Old Trafford? <laughs> like, um, I, I, I think he's the Premier League player with the most goals at Old Trafford. Yeah, he's like the Premier League players with the most goals at Old Trafford, and he always scores goals versus Man United. And you're disrespecting Mo in 2024. And I'll speak on Mo now in a second. I will. I actually will address it. And Tom also, will be there as well. also, who who are we no. actually going to play there? Like, as much as I like Elliot, and as much as I think Elliot had a good game yesterday, I'm not starting Elliot and playing him for 90 minutes against United. But I've got Mo Seller on the bench. Nope. I'm not nope. doing that. Yeah. No. Big up to Jack who says afternoon lads sending love from Merseyside. Big up to you, Jack. You know you would love to know on the stream right here. I'm a bigger scouser than Tom Little himself. Oh, look at this man. Look at this. Appreciate you. You know, I even know the color of the garbage bins. The fact that you've just called it a garbage bin says it all. It's a wheelie bin. Trash bins. It's a wheelie bin. The it's bin. got wheels on it. It's a wheelie bin. Wheelie bin. I've never heard Jack say wheelie bin before. It's, it's a wheelie color. bin. Yes, it is. It's well done. Color. You know, well over done. here, we don't have a wheelie bin. We have a metal bin. You know, the yeah, big oh. old metal ones, the ones that are like probably mm -hmm. the size of like half a room type stuff. Oh, yeah. And you just um, put everything in the big one. Yes, mm -hmm. and just put everything in there. And then the gar the truck comes and just goes like... Uh, 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 oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we also, we also have like... <laughs> like the one in GTA, actually. I don't know if you've seen it. The one in yeah, GTA. But we, we also have boom and they just don't have to deal with them big bins. They just deal with the little <laughs> ones. Fairs, fairs. Um, big up to 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 my guy Elbar who says still not sure on this Amorum guy. Best be right, Tom. I'm always right, Liam. I'm always right. <laughs> that is absolutely rubbish. You are not always right because the manager that has us top of the league right now. I'm not gonna say anything, Tom. You know the rest. Big up to you, Elbar and seven. Big up to. You. I keep forgetting your name, bro. Nobbins mentioned it like five times, and I Liam. forget it. It's Liam. Liam. No, it's not Liam. It's Ibrahim. It it's Liam. I've played with him on pro clubs and he's the shittest left winger going. I'd know it because I shout at him every single time. It's Liam. Is his name actually Liam? Isn't it Ibrahim? <laughs> if it's Ibrahim, then I've been calling him something horribly wrong every time he fucks up on clubs. Yeah, make up to you, Liam. Hussam, I had a nightmare you started 63 different Runs all over YouTube after this one with Mo. I love the content, but I'll subscribe, subscribe to Maximum to <laughs> Don't worry, Frankie Fast Hands. I am not creating 63 YouTube channels. I promise you. I promise 62. you. I'm not gonna... He's creating yeah, 62. Not, uh... No, listen. This is this is football, MHF, and possibly if we ever get like big as hell, maybe we'll make like this is football clips or something. That's that's about it. Other than that, we ain't creating no damn big channel. We ain't doing none of yeah. this shit. Whoever, when this is football clips happens, it will just be all the things me and you done around this time. It'll be all yeah. clips from these streams of just horrendous things on the pair of us. And, 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 and Vel as well, we realized he can't work under pressure. Vel can't work under pressure. So we I'm only he can only make thumbnails for one channel now. Yeah, he's my full-time employee now. Big up to, to you, Vel. Um, anyway, big up to Aaron as well who sends in a massive super chat just to say like the stream. And that's the, the next subject that we're going to go into, the Salah and the Gravenberg stuff as well. A big up to Aaron for sending in the super chat. Make sure you guys are listening to him, every single one of you guys right now. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe to This Is Football if you're to do so. Tom Little has fully been upgraded now and he's been consistent, so his channel is now back in the title. So make sure you guys are slapping the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing. Keep letting us know your opinions in the chat. And there's two players I want to talk about next, Tom. 
and I want to talk about Mo Salah and Ryan Gravenberg. And I feel like people are already exaggerating Mo Salah's performance and talking about, you know, how the guy was really bad and all this. Now, I want to get something out of my chest and then I want to get Tom's reaction to it. If we're saying by Mo Salah's world-class best player in the world standard and, you know, best player in the Premier League standard, did he have a good game? The answer is no. He did not have a good game by that incredible standard. But on the pitch yesterday, did he have a bad game? I don't really think he had a bad game at all. I think in the first half, he's, he was our creative spark. Um, you know, he actually played balls in behind for Nunez and Diaz. Um, you know, he was always willing to take a shot, which I like. You know, and even his shot wasn't even bad. There was one that, that the goalkeeper saved. For me, I feel like people are overdoing it with the Salah performance. I really don't think he was that bad at all. I think the one player that stank from start to finish is that Dutchman who defends with his perfume smell. And I am not talking about Virgil van Dijk. I am talking about Ryan Gramberg. That guy right there was the worst player on the whole pitch for me. He pulled out from so many 50-50s. And he's just, I just don't know if he has it in him to just fight, you know? And, 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 you know, there are people who say stuff like, you know, passion and desire and blah, 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 and use it like buzzwords. But I'm not using it like a buzzword. And Tom knows exactly where I'm going with this. When it comes to passion and fight and desire and it, aggression. It can't be all, only attribute, but it has to be an attribute. It has to be part of it. And I just don't see Gravenberg with the will and the desire and the fight for it. And I don't even think... He's a Liverpool style player to begin with. I think from now on, he just needs to be like a, you know, play him in the Europa League type situation. And that's it, because I just don't see him making us better or improving us or, or playing well for Liverpool Football Club. I mean, I, I, I don't think Salah the great guy. I don't think it's that, it's all down to him. I think the system helped him because he didn't get on the ball as much. There were glimpses of good play from Salah, but it wasn't normally what I expect from him. Mm -hmm. um, but Graven Birch is just, I never wants them anyway, because I never, Bayern don't sell players if they're good. There's certain clubs in Europe that just don't sell players if they're good. They keep them. True. Bayern, Real Madrid, and it used to be Chelsea. Chelsea also used to be like that. They would keep players if they were good. It used to be Barca as well. Yeah, but Barca were prone to one or two ones, like Samuelito or something, but mainly like that they were also like that as well. But then... He's come in. I don't think we play a system that suits him. You can see he's got lots of technical ability. That's fine. But the manager... That I, got you know what? You want to know what's mad? I don't even see that. He, no, he don't. He, I don't even see Gravenberg's technical ability. Honestly. I, I see it. To be fair, I, I, I do see it. It's just ultimately, it's not... It, it's not enough for us. It's not enough in, in that sense. And ultimately, people are saying it's his first season, give him a chance. Yeah, if it was his first season under Klopp, when he was going to have a second season under Klopp, maybe. But he's had one season under Klopp, he's now going to go to probably Amarim. If you've watched my videos, you know that Gravenberch is someone I've said. He probably doesn't have a future. He doesn't fit what Amarim likes. We've got other midfielders who do. So Gravenberch is someone that really could be on the chopping block. And I'm sure he's a decent lad. It's just... it's. When the, the difference between him and Curtis Jones, we're not here to question his personality, Tom. We're talking about, I, I know. I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to big Man him up. I'm this decent lad. I don't care if he's good or not off the pitch, bro. I'm talking about on the pitch, I, man. I know, but uh, when you see the impact that um, Curtis Jones has off the bench, so bad for him right now that you're actually just saying he's so shit on the pitch that you're just going like, oh, he has a nice personality and he's a good guy, basically. Is that what they're doing? Partly, uh, I mean, look, I. When you see what Curtis Jones done in his limited cameo and compared to what Gavin Birch was doing, it's night and day. And that's I'm so one. happy Jones is back. I'm actually so happy he's back. By the way, is there I... anything on this endo injury situation? Um, you probably he could have played yesterday, but we didn't want to risk it, so he can be fine for United. Oh, good, good. I, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. Like uh, he wasn't stable. That's what I'm saying, Aaron. That's what I'm saying. Listen, Tom, you're a decent lad, but I'm not starting you versus United. I, you are, I'm not starting him either, just because he's a decent lad. I'm not even starting Tom in Europa. I could just tell Tom is slow as hell. I could just tell 
He's mm. slow. I could tell pace, you have zero pace. 100% you have zero pace. I'm, 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 you're, I'm, you're I'm not, I'm not rapid. Something. You're going to pit. Oh, yeah. I, lo I love yeah, a good little shit or thing. I'm, I'm, yeah, dark it's... arts and all that. Yes, very much love that. But, uh, How tall are you? No trolling. Uh, 5'11", 6 foot, something like that. I don't know exactly. I don't measure myself, but I'm around 6 five foot. Eleven. Tom, no one measures himself. But like when you go to the doctor or you make a medical or like whatever. You but I, have not be, I haven't been the doctor since before COVID. 5'11", is f So how do you play left back then if you're 5'11"? I just play whatever I need to play. I've played pretty much everywhere. You're Milner, basically. Yeah, I'm, but I, I don't look stiff. That's what I I'm saying. He made me the weird guy by saying I don't measure myself, but that's not the point. People measure themselves like when they go to the doctor and shit. I, sorry for not knowing my exact height. I, I think I'm six foot, if not just slightly below that. But that's based on what I'm, other people are around me. And I'm taller than them, but look. I just, it, it is what it is. And Six one. I, I can already see the comments because Lannan isn't the only one. So I had DMs while I was it yesterday. Yes, I was big on Curtis Jones because Curtis Jones was an academy kid coming through, getting limited minutes. Ryan Gravenbitch cost my football club £38 million and is the highest paid under 21 footballer in the Premier League. My standards for Curtis Jones coming through and Ryan Gravenbitch in their first season are different. They're different. Ryan Gravenberch was touted as this, you know, on the same pedestal as, as Bellingham and Camavinga. Curtis Jones was a decent left winger in the academy. Now the truth is coming out that Lannan has triggered him. The truth is coming out. It's no longer, I'm sure he's a decent lad. Yes, go on, Tom. Talk to me about Gravenberg. Talk to me. Yes. No, but Tom, honestly, I'll be honest with you. From now on, I'm just playing him in Europa League. Literally nowhere else. Literally nowhere else. Yeah, it's probably the competition that suits. I mean, you can do like cameo minutes. I don't mind having cameo minutes when the game's quiet, but like, it's just it. I need I needed more from him. There's been times where we've had to turn to him this season, and he hasn't done it. I think to yeah, Arsenal yeah. away. I think to, you know, and, and I remember when um, it, it was the derby when he started, and everyone was going, "Oh, see." Graven Bitch has made that left central midfield spot his owner had a cases. No, we didn't. And we've seen no. as the season's progressed. Even, even did. I didn't say that as shameless as I am with Curtis Jones. Like, like I said, the difference yesterday was night and day. Curtis Jones was brilliant. Done everything right. I, I think his decision making has improved an awful lot this season. An awful lot. What was probably his there's only, well, there's only one more, thing I'd say, it. Tom, though. With Curtis Jones yesterday, there was like one or two moments where I wanted to punch him for not releasing the ball quickly. That's it. Well, yeah, but it, was that, first game. Was it, it, it was the first game back in how long was it? He's been out since yeah, February. That's the one thing that frustrates me. I wish just Klopp gets him in a room and goes like, can you just release the bloody ball? That's it. Uh, I think there was like, I swear it was like four, it was like three, one. It was like the 94th minute. And he had the ball, and there was like three other people on his right, and he just dribble, 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 hold the ball, hold the ball, hold the ball. I'm like, bro, release, yeah, release, release. It, it, anyway, it, he's been good this year, and I think he's going to play a big part to end the season. If if he's starting, he's starting. If he's not off the bench, he's a fantastic player as well for the bench, Curtis. Super chats, hold your horses. We're going to come to you in a second, but first I want to talk about something else, Tom. You know, we've spoken about Salah, we've spoken about Gravenberg. I want to talk about the 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 obviously the the forward line in mm -hmm. general, whether it be chance creation, whether it be goals. What is happening with this with, with our goal situation? Now you'll tell me, Hussam, we scored three goals yesterday. Blah blah. I hear that. I hear that. Mm -hmm. And maybe we're being a bit greedy by expecting us to beat Sheffield by too much. But what's 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 the the, the issue with Liverpool's goal scoring not being at a high level, even like we were used to even this season? I'd say. I, I think it's the same problem that we've always had. We don't have these elite finishers like that. Joss is an elite finisher, but everyone else I wouldn't class as elite finishers. They're great finishers or good finishers, but they're not elite. So some some of the chances they miss, they miss. That's that is what it is. We still score a lot of goals because we create a lot of chances, but when you don't have three cold blooded killers in front of goal, it's it 
it sort of stinks at times, doesn't it? Hence why Diaz misses chances, Nunes misses chances, Salah misses chances, Gakpo misses chances. The only one who doesn't is Jose, but he's barely ever on the pitch constantly enough for, for us in that sense. Like, everyone understands with Jose, you want him fit because he's the, different, he's the X factor. But when is he actually fit, fit, though? Because apparently it was supposed to be after international break, no? Um, I think it's after United. I think that's what Klopp said. After yeah. the United game? Yeah, af- after Bro, the United game. Bro, people said he'd be fit for Old Trafford, man, remember? Yeah, I, I think him and Trent were eyeing up that one, but it was just a little bit too soon. I'll be honest with you, I think the one thing that worries me with this lack of goals is... Or like the forward line in general is I actually think that would like the, the way that we would get cost points this season is actually the forward line. Like that's the one thing I'd say. Like when it comes to when it comes yeah, to the times we've dropped the points this season, City, Arsenal, uh, at home that is not away. Away we actually mm-hmm. were just dreadful. Uh, at home, City at home. I'd even go as far as to say even a Brighton away, Luton away, of course. We all remember. No, I, I, I don't put Brighton away on them because the chances didn't fall to the attackers that day. That was on fucking the midfielders for not taking their chances. Who was it who had that back post? Gravenberg, funnily enough. Fucking two yards out and he hits the bar. He is the bar. Unmarked, no, open no, goal, and he hits the bar. You know. Yeah, but the thing is, like, with this Luton, forward line, it's just, Luton, that's the Luton, thing that worries me. I put Luton on them because Nunes missed so many. Luton is 100% goals. on them. Nunes, and, Nunes that day alone could have had 50 goals. Um, City, yeah, I wouldn't say Arsenal well, necessarily again. Even um, Tottenham, I City, can't put on them Arsenal, Luton, Brighton. There's three more draws. Um, United, have you said United? Oh, United, oh my god, Nunes that Nunes was on them. Nothing. Lord have mercy. Five um, draws, that's five. Draws. We're two away. I think we have seven draws this season. So you'd have two against City. Chelsea, uh, Chelsea away. Oh yeah, yeah, Chelsea away at the start of the season. Yeah, again, yeah, no, I wouldn't, away. I wouldn't really pin that one on the attackers. That was just Chelsea away know. was it's just the first game of the season anyway, so they're yeah. getting into the groove of things. Right in a way, I wouldn't pin on the attackers. Luton, yes. City away, no. You know, Tom, like you kind of get what yes. I'm saying, even with like the FA Cup game, because I feel like that was proof. That was just proof. Sometimes you have to look at the signs and understand and and learn and. You know, just just yeah. get it. You have to get it. You it, know, and it, it it is always the most inconsistent part of our team, the forward line. Even when you know Mane and Firmino and Salah were there, and they were the best front three that we've had in the Premier League, it's still you had games where they'd miss chances. I think back to fucking Napoli at home. Oh my god, that was genuinely the most horrendous thing. That I've was Mane. That wasn't even Salah. Yeah, <laughs> that but was Mane. yeah, but. All- yeah, but all of them have games like that. All of them have had games, and all of them will have games like that. That's ultimately what it what it's like. I think with my, my only thing is like I can we have just like one game where all three play well? Can we actually just have one game? I I, I like I, one like I, I, I have a dream that like Salah, Nunez, and Diaz, or whoever the hell mm-hmm. plays this Sunday, I just go like all three had a good game. That's it. That's what I want, but it's just not happening, brother. It's not happening. Well, yeah, Every because... time it's like one of them has a good game or like max two and then the third guy plays like shit and just makes no sense, bro. Just makes no sense. I, I, think, I think there's been games where they've been closer, but ultimately what it is that um, when one has a real... So if you want all three to have a good game, all three needs to score. But there's no game where all three are going to score one goal. One of them will get two. So then that's the standard that they set and the others who didn't perform at the same level because he didn't get two goals and they'll probably have missed a couple of chances. That's how it is, unfortunately, in, in football. I have no real qualms with the front line. I'd like to see Jota back, you know, in, in that start 11 when he's fit. But with the with the setup how it is now, it works because we score goals. We just miss chances. I, I feel yesterday wasn't really on the attack in the sense that because we had no width on the left or the right, because for some reason we were telling Bradley to inverse as well. Um, and then McCall's tried to go deeper because we had no endo. A lot of the creativity that the front three rely on was stifled. So they didn't really have the same quality of chances that they normally do. So I can't really pin it on, on them in that way. So I'm, I will speak on it properly if it does come back to cost us this season. But I don't, 
I think we've somewhat turned a corner on it in the sense that Nunes is now well, but based on what better. though, because it was literally McAllister that saved us, who's a midfielder yesterday. Well, yeah, but I'm quite happy for my attacking midfielder to step in. He has every time he has world. every time he gets the ball. He's the type of player that I figure I figured out what Diaz is. He's mm. the type of player that like looks threatening because of the way that he dribbles, but never actually amasses to anything. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Darwin Nunez fought for his life, which is why I said he had a good game. I actually recognized, I was like, Darwin Nunez, even without the goal, you're having a good game. I, I, I'll, I'll, be I'll be honest, I'll be honest, I'll be honest to Sam. I think you've been a little bit harsh on Diaz yesterday. I, I really do. I, on, because, yes, he, the end product in terms of a goal or something wasn't there, but he did create an awful lot for us. We just didn't finish. Name it. a chance he created, that's my point. A chance he created, he put in a you couple can't. really good crosses. He did, he put in a couple of really good crosses. Yeah, you can't, you cannot even name a chance he created, Tom. That's my point. I can't, right? If you want one off the top of my head, it's the cross to Nunes in the first half, which Nunes just headed just wide of the post. Oh my god, Tom. Yeah, the reason why Nunes headed that wide is because is the, the cross was too far, uh, too far away. No, anyway, but, no, but Hassam, Hassam, this is what you're doing. We're saying that yes, we didn't create exceptionally good chances, we didn't, no one did. So I can't just say, oh, well, Diaz didn't do it because neither did no, Salah. No, no, I, I, we're having a general here. I, I no, think Diaz general, has turned a corner. I think Diaz, I, I think Diaz, Diaz has turned a corner Diaz. recently. I think the confidence is coming back. Nah. I think, I, I said it yesterday, Diaz is now back. I'm not saying Gak put him the corner either just because he scored the header. No, no. But, but what I'm saying, it, it's not just one game with Diaz. I think Diaz is back to the point where we bought him. So, remember the Diaz that we bought where he was very exciting, could beat his man, but put in some decent deliveries, but the end product was the complaints. We were getting, you know, you know, you know just before that injury, we were about to get end product from him, and then he got injured, and we went back two steps, and now we've taken the first step, we've now went out back to the Diaz that we bought just two years after. We're, we're now going to do the whole end product thing again. You know, Diaz, you know, you know, it's funny. The, I My Diaz to Barcelona video... That one reached Colombia YouTube, and uh, I've had a couple of insulting comments in the chat, you know, from Colombians calling me out for Luis Diaz, you know. I'm like, okay. When I done the video with uh, with Luis Diaz's dad, and I was like, you know, his dad just needs to, you know, just stop talking to the media and stuff. Listen, it's not, it's not an agenda. I just think, I just hope they don't let us down one more time to the end of the season, but... You know, um, and that segues us perfectly to the game that they did let us down in, aka the FA Cup game, because that game 100% is on the forward. Super Chats, I'm coming to you guys in a second. Talk to me, Tom. Manchester United away next. Mm -hmm. Biggest game in English football. By the way, guys, um, you know, we're, we're organizing the stream nicely and stuff. We're having a great conversation. Me and Tom ain't even fighting. Make sure you guys are liking the video. Make sure you guys are subscribing to This Is Football if you're ready to do so. Every single one of you guys, please hit the like button. Mods, keep reminding them to like, please. Um, you know, Aaron has sent in a super chat just to tell them to like. So let's get to 200 likes ASAP right now, please. Let's get to 200 likes. We have 350 okay. people in here. Uh, uh, Diaz actually got an assist yesterday. Even on a Friday, who did he assist? <laughs> the McAllister goal is him, so he oh, technically I'm got the assist for that. <laughs> 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 oh my god. The fact they've actually counted it as an assist is brilliant as well. It's a hundred percent of records. <laughs> We're getting to the GA people. We're getting to the GA. He's getting assists now. <laughs> Oh my god. Two new is fucking Bradley Donny Webber his fucking name scored. The fuck you say to me? Gotta mix these packs and potions, no peace till I put a sim in a burner. I'm on the bluff like Werner, back road like it, fully paid bro, I'm an earner. I fly past, I'm a head top tamer. The metals are washed like Sammy Kadira, and they should start calling me uncle because when I speak on these beats they get murdered. Bam, 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 bam! Can we talk can about we the United game now? Can we just appreciate as well the shirts have changed? And can you stop talking about the... I, I'll be honest with you, now that I've seen you with short hair, never ever go long hair again. Ever. 
Short hair is so much better. Short hair is like short hair. You look so much better with short hair, long hair. Have you seen the one where you're singing with long hair, Tom? It's not crazy, one. is it? It's not crazy. Uh, never do that again. You, you're not. You're never gonna look like one of the Beatles. Let's just, you know, hit the like button, subscribe. So, can you talk? Can I actually talk to me about my United Liverpool, or are you just gonna talk about yeah, Diaz yeah, assisting um... a McAllister banger? You shameless bastard. You know who the, who assisted McAllister's banger against Fulham? Also Luis Diaz. That's not an assist See? I count. See, he's got Come assist. He, he's creating. Come he's on. creating. The guy scored a banger from 50 yards. I'm supposed to give credit for the assist for a layoff, basically. Okay, oh, tell 100%. me about the um, Look, I don't know what the injury situation is. Apparently, they lost another two centre-backs last night. That's worse. That's actually bad for us. Exactly. That woodies me. Because, because now they're going to do a low block from hell, basically. <laughs> That's what they're gonna everything do. now points to them getting something over the line in terms of, oh, we've got some random academy kid who stepped forward and has a blind they're on his debut to, to win United the point or something like that. We should get the job done. But I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate Old Trafford. And one more time, I hate Old Trafford. We just need... I, I think that the FA Cup game won't be repeated. I think that we'll perform better. But the finishing needs to be there. The finishing 100% needs to be there because we should have had that FA Cup game done and dusted and wrapped up very early on. Should have been four, five, because the chances we had were big, but we just didn't take them. And we should have had the Sheffield United game dusted off. Pretty early, you know. No, but I'll be honest with Sam. We chased more against United than we did against Sheffield United. Brother, against United when we were two and up, we could have scored like about five five goals. That that midfield is so I I, I watched part of that game yesterday, the United game. Fucking hell, that team is so open. People, people it should people. perfectly suit us. United the way United play should logically perfectly suit us. And yet we apparently can't get them this year. Mental, yes, Ruben Amarim, Amarim, Ruben Amarim, na 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 Ruben Amarim, Amarim, Ruben Amarim. Come on, this is this is Tom right now, but just imagine Amarim instead of Kaiseido and him instead of Lou. Oh, I can't remember how the dance goes. <laughs> 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 can we have the edit, Val, please? What is the context of that clip? <laughs> please, can we have the edit, Val? What's can we have, can we have Tom and Amarim, please? That's no, 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 no. I need to know the context of that clip. <laughs> Lewis the context is suspiciously defending Caicedo, as per usual. You know, nothing oh, you So you're going to get to crash it on him today for that first goal that they can see? But, but, <laughs> oh, 100%. Back, back to, the United, uh, to the United away game. I, I want to tell something to the to the people in the chat right now. The fact that Man United don't have a centre back fit is actually more worrying than it is makes me like at ease. People need to understand. I promise you, this Sunday it's going to be low block from hell. Everyone in the chat, I'm warning you all, it's gonna be a low block from the pits of hell. With like, it's just gonna be a disaster. It's just gonna be. I, I just, I just sense it. He is just gonna be, you know, <laughs> that that hug ball fraud is just gonna have a train parked in front of his, uh, in front of his like, uh, in front of his like uh, goal and stuff. And it's just, I am so. I'm actually tired. I'm actually tired. I hate Man United. I actually hate Man United. And. You know, I, I I just want us to slap them this Sunday. And if we do slap them this Sunday, I'll be a bit more confident. But it's just the fact that, you know, we've drew with them at Anfield. I need certain things. Basically, I need us at Old Trafford. I, I need Casemiro to play what? in that midfield. Mm -hmm. I, I need I need a Casemiro in that midfield. Mm -hmm. So McAllister and Sobos like can play around him. I don't know who they're going to play at centre-back. But I need Nunes to be on it because if they're gonna play Camboale and like, Maguire. Camboale. Yeah. Nunes should have a field day running behind off the shoulders of them too. Oh, no, Whatever no, side no. they play Wamba Saka on, we need to just go the other side. 
because I thought Dallow was really bad yesterday and a, a bit of pace had him and he so he seems to struggle off his shoulder. And the fullbacks need to be switched on because that was where we got done at Old Trafford. For the first 30 minutes, we failed to pick up the fact that United knew how to play one-twos. A basic football thing of one-twos, we couldn't figure it out. We should, on paper, be quite comfortable against United. But it isn't played on paper and that's what worries me. That's what worries me. We need to just get over the line. I don't care how it's done. I don't care if it's a scrappy, awful 2-1. Just get over the line, people. Thank you. In behind where, Tom? There's no in behind. That's the problem. Yeah, but I don't think... If you that's that, that's the actually lock. like that as his comment is actually the problem. In behind where, bro? Like where? Like no, where? The, the, this is the thing. If United play a low block, we'll you just think play United the game. are going to try attack? That you think they're going to try play football? I think they're going to have to. No, but have to for what? If they, because if they... United play football, we'll slap them by three or four goals, easy. No, but because ultimately, what, the, the difference now, Hassan, is I think that we can get over the line if a team plays a low block for ninety minutes. We, we find a way. We find the means in a way. All we need is one goal. And then United oh, physically have to come out because the they can't accept that. Dirtiest, stinkiest low block. It stinks worse than a fish market. Yes, but the, but just... the difference with their low block last time was they had competent centre-backs in there. Now they've got a young lad who will be very emotional because it's his first game against Liverpool. Yeah, and then suddenly he'll have his best game ever in my United shirt. Either that or it's his like head goes in. At the end of the day, we should... We, we should get over the line. I don't think United can employ a low block in that way. I, I think we've done it against us, but we still had chances to score. It wasn't like they nullified us. If Diaz and Nunes didn't fucking run into each other, or Nunes, when he had an open goal, stop running and sit there and ask for a penalty, we win that game. We just need to take our chances. We just need to turn up. And I agree. It, I agree. I guess if you get over the line against United, the confidence boost that gives you is immense. Thing is, these are, are our biggest rivals, and yeah, and last year it was it was um it was just true. Remember last season, how when they came to to Anfield, it was kind of like our cup final because we just had nothing to play for the whole year, and we're just playing for pride. And the game and the game meant so much. The reality is, for Man United fans and Manchester United, they're already talking about you know the only thing left this season is for us to ruin Man United for us to lure ruin Liverpool's title. Yesterday, I done a show with Griggs. And Grizz was sat here talking about how the only thing left for them this season is for them to beat Liverpool at, at, at Old Trafford and put a dent on their title. That's it, bro. Like, this is this is actually their season now. Like, people need to realise this is the Man United season now. That, that, this is it. This is fully their season. Like, there is nothing for them to do. There is nothing for them to just be hyped about. There is... Khalas, this is it. If they win this Sunday, they will celebrate like they won the World Cup. That's the unfortunate reality. <laughs> they will celebrate like they won the World Cup, you know? So that's that's what I say. Tom, can you stop glazing over Amarim on Twitter and focus for the last 10 minutes of the show? See how I don't even have Twitter and I know you, that's what you're doing. So, like, this is their cup final. And what worries me is always these players will play like 5%, 10% extra. So we are capable of beating Man United. On paper, we should be beating Man United. We have more than enough weapons to beat Man United with. And actually, I wish we could just slap the shit out of them, not just beat them. However, however, it just worries me the fact that they will be in a low block, the fact that they're going to play out of their skin, the fact that they're going to do 5 6 7% extra. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's just it's their cup final. It's not our cup final, you know. So it should it should be our cup final. But it's not. You know that's not how the players were headed to the game with. I know what they're gonna play like. We just need to not we need to play the game and not the occasion. That's what we need to do. I think we, we fell down to their level in the FA Cup for the first half. We can't do that. We need to play the game. We need to play the we need to play our way and don't try and match what United do because United are going to try and make it a horrible, nasty affair. We just need to do our job. And I think we can do. Whether we do is a different kettle of fish. But I, I, I think we can do. I think that there's something different now about this running. I think that there's a fire in the belly, especially after the FA Cup game. I think that, they, that we will get over the line against um, United. 
I hope so, honestly. I hope you're right, Wallahi. I want us to get over the line. I don't want us to beat them because I refuse the same guy that gave Man United five and seven, their biggest loss at Old Trafford, their biggest loss in Premier League history. I refuse to believe that he just won't give them a loss, you know, in this final season. It just, that just doesn't sit right with me. By the way, had we had Klopp announced like that he'd be leaving in December time before we played them, I think we would have beat them like 6 0 that day. But anyway, that's that's a different point for a different day. Um, big up to, to, to all of you guys. Make sure you guys are slapping the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing. Let me just go to the super chats, uh, you know, before we uh, wrap up. I've got back again. I'm going to go bully, uh, you know. You get to bully two of them. You get to, even yeah, though you gonna... won, you get to bully them. Because Kai yeah. Sado. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Told man about Poch. By the way, they're three points of seventh. That's where I expected them to be anyway. But that's besides the point. Big up to you, Aaron. Yeah, it, Always showing me love and support. I, I, I don't, I don't forget this. Salah's future is at striker, like Ronaldo did, bro. It might be, but then probably not, not necessarily at Liverpool. Then, Amarim. if he wants to be a striker, Amarim prefers bigger, taller, more physical strikers who hold up. Yeah, that's what I'm about to say. No, no, I'm going to ask you something else. Would you do? Do you see Amarim playing him next to a striker, like striker and him? Amarim will play him probably off the right, but more so as like a ten. Second yeah, that's striker, what I'm playing, I'm like next to a striker. That, that, that's where it, it it would be him on the right and Sabasla on the left, with Nunes up top. Wait, what? So who are the who are the two of the midfielders then? Uh, McAllister and and Awo Bajšić. Oh, okay. Okay. You dropped McAllister there. I was about to slap the slap. No, McAllister, so McAllister's the, the deeper sense of it. Yeah, uh, you scared me. When you said Sobos on the left, you fully scared me. I was like, wait, wait what? Okay, but anyway. <coughs> 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 Sorry. If we if we beat United, I will start to believe. We must, says Sean. We must. We must win every single game. We have eight games. The reality is, if City win eight games, it doesn't guarantee them a league title. If Arsenal win eight games, it doesn't guarantee them a league title. If we win eight games, we are league champions. This is exactly why I want us to win every single game. And you know what it says, Sean? I'm tired. Like this Saturday, inshallah, I'll be there. I'll be there to hate on the City Palace game. I'll be there to hate on the Arsenal Brighton game. You know, I'll be there. Don't worry. Guys. Arsenal like, Brighton is a, Arsenal Brighton's one I'll have a little eye on because that perfect. one. But you know what? What I'm tired of, and everyone in the chat is is what, just as tired. You're as me. tired of relying on other teams to do you the favor. Yes, thank you. I'm tired because I watched the Aston Villa game. Durant and the other guy, Musa Diaby. I, I, I don't know. I don't know why you expected anything off that Villa game. The moment no, I saw no, Emmy Martinez, they chances, and they messed them the all up. The moment I saw Emmy Martinez was not playing, I just packed it in and went, "Yeah, I'm not watching it." Big up, Olsen. Uh, lads, can you discuss Bellingham 2030? He will be like 26, and has even said he would still love to play in the Premier League, win Madrid trophies, then LFC. Says Jack. Howell. I have no idea what football will be like in 2030. I don't know if we'll st- I don't know who our manager will be. I don't know who our players will be. Hey, the way football is headed, Jack, it depends if we're like, you know, it depends if we're paying luxury tax or not. <laughs> Oh, don't, even start, don't even get me started on that shit. That's horrendous. They, they, they want that's to MBA this shit so badly, bro. That's a luxury tax. Oh, my tax God. It, it's generally the most horrendous thing I've heard. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll put a luxury tax in, which punishes people who want to break the rules. So they'll just spend money to break rules. What does that mean for you, Wafer? Let's say a team breaks the luxury tax. You do realize FFB still applies. So these teams break all these rules to get into the Champions League, and they're not even allowed to play in the Champions League because they've broken rules. It makes yeah. no sense. It would have to be in 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 uh, c- compliance with the UEFA, I would assume. 100%. But then, guys, oh, how's oh, there the other sixty people in here? We ain't even on two hundred likes yet. Hit the, the like button. I'll be honest with you, Jack. Do you want the honest answer based on someone who's been watching football a long time? If Jude Bellingham is at Real Madrid, winning trophies, probably winning a Ballon d'Or or two, there is literally zero reason for him to to leave Real Madrid. Simple as. And if you tell me a new challenge and shit like that first, he says the reason because Madrid stars usually say stay six, seven years. Yes, they stay six, seven years and then retire there or they leave when they're no longer good enough. The Don himself, Cristiano Ronaldo, 
left Real Madrid when he wasn't at the peak of his powers, when he wasn't incredible, when he wasn't amazing, when he wasn't unstoppable. And that's one of the goats of football. Big up to Leto says Salah was bad yesterday. If it was Gakpo with that performance, we won't hear the end of it. You criticize Haaland for being a passenger in games. Let, you know what? Your super chat is 100% spot on. Your super chat is 100% spot on. If it was Gakpo, I would criticize him. You know why? Because Cody Gakpo has not had consistent good performances for a period of seven years for Liverpool Football Club. Won me a Premier League, a Carabao Cup, an FA Cup, a Champions League. Won me every trophy there is to win in, in, in football. Has led this side multiple times. Has has carried our side multiple times. So by definition, I can't keep the same energy because I'm only human after all. And when you say Salah was a passenger, comparing obviously saying Haaland was a passenger, I don't think Salah was a passenger yesterday. I don't even think Tom would say he's a passenger. He just got the ball in pockets. He tried to be creative. He played the ball in behind, I think, to Nunes twice. He had opportunities. But I don't think he was that bad. He wasn't Gakpo versus... Uh, two. I think it was like two games ago we played someone where Gakpo was horrendous. I forgot who. He wasn't Gakpo versus whoever vibes. Like, he wasn't that bad. Pagan's always finding ways to put Salah down. He's allowed to have an average performance. Get over it. He's our best player. Live with it. Big up H. Thank you so much. That's what I'm saying, my guy Sal. He's just our... He's just our best player. He's our best forward. And even Tom messaged me. He's like, I was watching your reaction to the Salah substitution. Bro, it's a normal reaction because I'm looking at the scoreline and it's 1-1. And I'm thinking we're taking off Mo. This is insanity. But I hope he recovers against Man United because Sal, you need to understand something. Unlike Lit Vibes, I know that Mo Salah has the most Premier League goals at Old Trafford ever. So that's something that, you know, we have to let him go. Chlad, simple. Big up to you, Sal. That was the worst Scouse accent I've ever done. Big up to Luke who says, uh, big up, big up. Big up to you, Luke Skywalker. Always showing up loud support. Big up to you. Katsand is back with his stripper money. Yeah, go feed your grandkids. Uh, big up to Abdul Aziz who says, I'm worried about the goals that we concede. I don't remember the last time we had a clean sheet. When is um, the last time we had a clean sheet? The last Google time goes. we had a clean sheet was... Don't mention Europa. Challenge. I'm not. It was Challenge. Forest away. Oh my God, our last clean sheet was March the 2nd, it's April 5th. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yo, Abdelaziz is cooking, let him cook. I don't, He's you know what though, I, because of the amount of goals we score, I don't mind not necessarily keeping a clean sheet. It's if we weren't scoring loads, that I'd worry. But we're averaging like three goals a game. So you can, you can somewhat afford to have one. Yeah, but like Loki not having a clean sheet since March is bad. Like, you know, that's bad. We're in April. I mean, you know? if you say it like that, yeah, but in that time, we've had two Premier League games. But without a clean sheet in three Premier League games. Pairs, pairs. Big up to you, Abdelaziz. By the way, you look like someone I think that I know, I've known in real life. But I appreciate you. Big up Tom Little. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> you get me. I'll make sure I end the video on it. And keep your super chat up on the screen, Captain Sal. Big up to Nitpal says, if we don't beat United, just bin the season, league gone. City will win every game from now on and don't depend on Ainge Ball to get points against City. This is 100%. If Liverpool Football Club drop points at any point in time from now to the end of the season, I'm giving up. I refuse to believe that Pep Guardiola what? will bottle a league title in their hands because they've punched me in the Hassam, face twice. Hassam, 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 you do realise we can draw the game and still finish above City without them dropping points? Had they had a Conte. No, we're three points ahead of them. We we can sorry, draw sorry, a game. Yeah, yeah. Loss, loss. I'm saying loss, 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 loss. Right. Loss. I I, loss, I just read that and it was don't beat them. So it was like, okay, if we draw, we're still fine. Because you, you'll, you'll finish a point. No, actually, no, team. because I know they will make up their goal difference. I know. That no, but, no, but Hassan, you've missed the point. We will be a point ahead of them. It's as relevant if they score 50 goals. What do you mean we'll be a point ahead of them? Okay. We're, they are three points behind the... us. Okay, if we draw one, we'll be 71. They win, they'll be 70. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. I hear that. So then we're back to the Arsenal thing. Okay, yeah, I hear you. I hear you, brother. Fairs. Big up to you, Nitpal. But I do agree with you, though. I refuse to rely on anyone. I think if it was Graven... I think if Gravenberg wasn't playing, we would have scored more goals in the first half. He was really bad at the sub. All the subs All came on and made the difference. I, I agree with you. I really think just listen, it's okay. Like, bro, Gravenberg had a bad game. Gravenberg had a, had a bad game. You know, it's just, it's just. It's just 
there's nothing I can say about the guy. There's genuinely nothing I can say about the guy. I don't think he played well. I don't think he had a good performance. I don't think he he you know he cooked on the pitch. And I and the worst part is people keep saying I keep I see the technical ability. I don't even see the technical ability, baby. I, I just don't. I'm gonna be real with you. You know, and many times, many times actually, even his first touch is crap, Jay. That's what I'll say. Sometimes he touches it like seven meters ahead of him. Uh, big up to Venice. Think I think if you ask most United fans, they would they would take being the team to ruin our season over the FA Cup. That way, Ten Hag has no silverware. I'm agreeing with you, Vin, which is exactly why this Sunday will be no walkover. Which is exactly why this Sunday we need to earn the three points. Which is exactly why this Sunday we need to cook Man United because they will not lay down and give us the three points. We have to earn that shit. Simple as. So yeah. Full stop. Period. Big up to you, Vin. Always spitting. No, Hussam. Big up to Kenneth. No, Hussam. Salah was bad. Hold him accountable. He needs to be more dangerous. We can't be Salah sexuals. And it was immense when he came on. I am not a Salah sexual. I am a Liverpool football club sexual. I admire the four world-class players in this team. Alison Trent, Van Dijk and Mo. Those four players that have won the trophies. Now, when you say hold them accountable, he, like, we won the game. He won the game, brother, you know? At Liverpool Football Club, drawn or lost or something like that, I'd understand hold them accountable because then there would be something to hold them accountable to. But we won the game, so what exactly am I supposed to say about the guy? Like, I'm not, am I supposed to sit up here and go like, oh my God, you know? Um, you know, Mo Salah was so crap, but by the way, we won the game. Like, bro, can you guys actually have some shame at the call up? Honestly, like, do you, where is you guys' shame? Where is you guys' shame as as uh, humans? It's, it's it's just, yeah, I have no words. Anyway, we got to, to, to you, Kenneth. Do, and, and to his standard, it was a bad game. In general, no. Uh, big up to Kat Sunday who sends in a super sticker. Thank you so much, Kat Sunday. I appreciate you. This is not actually stripper money. You added a pound this time. Big up to you, Kat Sunday. Uh, big up to Michael Toxel who says, Diaz, me, Jogador, with the Colombian flag. I have some shame, Michael. I have some shame, Michael. The real Jogador that you sent a super chat for yesterday is Alexis McAllister. Can we can we get something? I'm about to redirect to right now to Troops TV. I want you all to spam Mac 10 in his chat with a crown emoji. Everyone just spam Mac 10 in his chat right here, right now, with a crown emoji, please. I want you all to go to the Troops or TV. Oh, Mac of the year. Oh, Mac 10 player of the year. No, no, no. Oh, just spam Mac 10 with a crown. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna put it in this chat right now. I want you all to copy paste it over there. I, I'm just I'm gonna put it for you now. Just copy paste it, literally. So so everyone so so so. You know, with a crown emoji. There. I just put it in the chat right now. Mac 10 with a crown emoji. Boom. I want everyone to copy paste this. Just copy paste it into the troops chat. Anyway, big up to all of you guys. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. We're going to be redirecting you to troops TV now. Spam this in his chat. Tom Little's channel is in the title. Yesterday he had a match reaction. Go watch it. Uh, you know, I forgot to. Uh, I cannot redirect on MHF, bro. It's just not letting me redirect. If it did, you know, I'd, I'd actually do it. But I'm not letting me read that much. Uh, because I think we haven't monetized yet. That's why. But anyway, uh, make sure you guys are slapping the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing. Get to Jay. Super chat right to the death who says, Elliot is really impressing me uh, this season. Uh, yes, Elliot is having, I think, his best time as a Liverpool player so far. Uh, I appreciate that, Jay. And Elliot deserves credit, definitely, for yesterday's performance. Uh, make sure you guys are liking the video. Make sure you guys are subscribing. Um, and remember, at 9 p.m. tonight, we have El Ahwa. At 9 p.m. tonight, we have the preview for this weekend's fixtures. 9 p.m. UK time. We will who, be who, there. Who are you crashing it on tonight? On, on El Ahwa. Staffy. Who are you crashing it on? Oh, Staffy. Staffy. Yeah, stuff are going to get cooked. So, yeah, 9 p.m. UK tonight. So, anyway, copy paste this message. Ikram has already uh, copy, uh, copied it. You get me? Go. We are going to be redirecting you right now. Kingsman just copy pasted it. We're going to be redirecting you to Troops TV. And I'll see you guys on that side. Tom Little, channel is in, this, uh, in the title. Is there anything you want to say before we end? Eight games to come. One step closer. Up the reds. Boom.